Hey guys, Diamond Tech here. Welcome to another video. And in this video, I want to talk about a series that been happening for the last three months, and that is Higurashi. And who doesn't know about it? It's basically Bloody Groundhog Day. And the reason I want to talk about this video about it is because I made a theory from the last three episodes or the latest episodes, basically. And as with the introduction of a new character, Rika Fate, and what's going to happen with that Blade Shard and Sonical. First off, we talked about the Rika kind of thing deal and what I think will happen to her. And that's because of the introduction of the new character. It's at the end of the series, Rika herself will become the Bursting Witch or get the title of the, Wor the Witch of Miracle. And before I explain more of this, I should go into detail of why I believe this and why it's important because of the introduction of the new, of the new character. So the reason I believe this is because, well, First of all, I'm going to talk about the introduction. With the introduction of the new character of this, go of this new goddess, or I should say quote unquote goddess, because reality, I think we all believe is Featherin. And who doesn't know who Featherin is, is watch Uwe Mekko. I might, made a f I might make a video about Featherin, so after this video, kind of do it backwards. <laughs> but who doesn't know who Featherin is, she's basically a witch in that series, and she's kind of like one of the first witches and the thing is supposedly she makes she made Higurashi to game board and she left it alone to be a logic error and who doesn't know what a logic error in a nutshell of it it's basically a punishment a punishment if you fail the game wrongly or you do something wrong basically you go to a logic error and there's several ways of what happened like one of the main characters going inside a coma because he got it wrong for the fact about Rika is that her logic error quote unquote could be the loop that way each loop is like someone dies and she dies in each loop and why I believe this will happen is basically the feathering in this game actually I, I, another thing too I should mention is the creator kind of deconfirms her because they say it's a different name or like different names which I think it's kind of funny if it's Dark on you. And, and before a lot of people say Dark on you, why you bring that up is because the fact is, uh, who doesn't know about like the other ports of the chapters on the PlayStation 3 or the PSP or whatever? Because they, you know, made other chapters for the games. Um, in those game systems, there's like these three extra chapters, and one of the chapters goes about Hanyu backstory, and it, it's depressing, but it explains a lot of like of what is the festival for and like you know about like the entails and all that <laughs> and I'd be laughing at Starconia but I'm going off topic so let's go back to Featherin see the reason Featherin is important is because as we've seen with her power she could reset time loops and that is amazing on its own the other thing that's amazing about it is that Rika doesn't realize when the timeline is resetted point for me is the first time she reset the timeline was the timeline that Rika won and she didn't realize the timeline was resetted. Only Sadako knew because she got that power. And I believe Featherin gives Sadako the power just because she met but the other thing too is because I think she was bringing back Sadako to that place as we've seen. And I think it's because in this game it's Featherin revenge game against Rika for being the last one. And logically speaking why I believe that is because Featherin character herself is cruel. She does like losing. She will win in the most cruelest way she has to. So enough about her, because I do believe she's gonna lead what what happened at the end. Let's talk about let's talk about Rika now. And the connection between Rika and the Bursting Witch. And like I said, who doesn't know who the Bursting Witch is? She's from another character from Uwe Mako. And she's basically is kind of confirmed she is Rika of basically Rika negative emotion to become her. And there's different versions of her because in the manga of Higurashi kind of shows that they're separate characters. While in the manga version of Uemeko confirms that they are the same character because in one of the flashbacks of her backstory we kind of see her as dressed as Rika or basically Rika and Hanyu in her backstory. And before a lot of people say like oh well, didn't she give up being a witch from the other game or the other game? Like, didn't she really became a witch after she beat it? Matter of fact, I believe she didn't 
and here's why. One, as we've seen from the new series, she still gained, she, not gained, but she still kept those memories from the other, from the other series. Proving the fact that Bursting Witch and Rika hasn't split up yet. Two, she didn't create no miracle yet. And the reason I said she haven't created no miracle is because one, we, if you think about like a game wise of Rika, and she even explained this to him in, in, the, in the last episodes or so, she explained that the reason she won is because she added Hanu to her deck. So I believe it wasn't a miracle. She wasn't playing with her full set of hands. And she didn't do it until basically when she figured everything out and she kind of forced Hanyu to join. Not forced, but no. She kind of got mad at Hanyu saying like, why won't you join us? Join us because she finally figured everything out and Hanyu finally did. And another thing too, she wasn't the one who created a miracle. Hanyu did. Hanyu challenged Takano. Rika never fought against Takano. And that's another thing. Yeah, she faced her, but she never beat her. Hanyu did. And Hanyu is a godlike being. And the reason I believe either the Bursting Wish or the title of Miracle of Wishes would be born from this game, because one, Rika doesn't have a full set of hands. Not this time. She doesn't have Sadako or Hanyu by her side. And the other thing too, she's going to have to be a witch. A godlike being on her own. That is some impossible feat for a human being or or for those or those fans of Umeko a piece to be a game creator. Don't get me wrong, as we say it's possible, but it's almost close to impossible. And now, because of that, I do believe this is how Bursting Witch will be born. The other thing I want to bring up is the shard, you know the blade, the blade shard and how it will be used. This is where it go used for several fucking things. And one thing that I thought about of how the blade was meant to use to be used for like suicide against Rika. I already thought the blade isn't gonna work because it had to be a completed sword. Cause you know how like she was going counting down and her last time loops I really thought that the shard wouldn't work. And that has to be like a complete fucking sword. Another thing is she might use it against Featherin. And the reason I say that is because this this where I got a clue of and I thought it was funny too is that before this series started, there was a Higurashi fighting game. Yes, a Higurashi fighting game, believe it or not. And in that game, one of Hanyu's weapons was that sword. So I believe that that blade might be able to at least damage damage uh what's her name? Feathering? <laughs> I don't know why it might make mine different blink. Or she she would have to at the end. It's either she's gonna kill Feather with that shard or at least damage her. Or it might kill Sadako. Bring up Sadako. Uh I'm just saying this now. I blame her 100 percent for this shit. Cause she could say no anytime. Rika wasn't pushing her. I, I, I know it's just how I know her out of this, but it's just because I see some comments saying I'm blaming Rika. Uh, of like some people saying Rika is for blame. I don't. She's not for blame, alright? She's been in that fucking cursed village for hundreds of hundreds of years. I don't want her to try to leave. And then Sato could have said no any fucking time. And before you say, like, well, you know, their family and all that. Like, I, I understand that because I understand Sadako passed one abusive uncle, her family fucking dying, Satoshi disappearing. And bring that up is that in this new timeline, I also want to bring up in this new timeline, or the, re the the good timeline that Rika won. I think it's kind of funny how Satoshi isn't shown, so either he's still in a coma, or he was like, peace, P peace my little sister that I barely seen her in her. I'm going to move with Shion and leave this town. <laughs> and I, I just think it's kind of funny about that. Anyways, going on talk about that, is that by the end of the series, I do truly believe that there's several ways how this is going to end. And there's many more. Don't get me wrong. Like, so far, this series tug us around a fucking a lot. Like, I, and I mean tugged. But by the end of this series, either the Bursting Witch will be born or Rika is going to find a good way to end this. Even if it means she might have to kill Sadako. Which, they suck ass. 
But anyways, that's my theory on that, that Rika will be turned to either Bursting Witch or Bursting Witch will be born from her, or at least the title of The Witch of Miracles. So that's the video here. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.